it's quite unfortunate that I cannot go furthermore or else drone, I will be crushed by a drone. Another day in Donetsk, Ukraine, a place that has become a living nightmare for some Ghanaian men trapped in a war they know nothing about, forced to fight for a cause they never chose. Come to our aid and help us. As you can see, all the buildings here have been collapsed. Here is very scary. Please, come help us. We need your help. These men who left Ghana with promises of menial jobs in Russia now find themselves on the front lines of Russia's war against Ukraine, their lives hanging by a threat with every passing moment. One of the men now deployed to the front line has shared a painful account of his deteriorating health. Unable to stand on his own, he is regularly injected with substances allegedly to gain the strength needed to continue fighting. His fear is visible as he wonders if it will all be too late. Me hunye, me na hinyi na yeme ya. Amasu ya mwenye bi pimfa. Mistake about Panama no. Ini bi ho. Amasu ya mbe bi ya me wano. Ani anu antene. Amasu ya zisi ya me na hinyi enu nye 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 na hinyi enu he says every day he stares at the sky hoping for deliverance, yet dreading that he might become the next casualty, crushed by a rubble attack or lost to the brutality of war. On Friday, September 20, 2024, the families of the 14 Ghanaian men trapped in Ukraine gathered at the Ghana police headquarters. They were there to confront Abraham Bwachi, the man accused of sending their loved ones to Russia under alleged false pretenses. But when they arrived, they were met with more disappointment. A police CID informed the families that Abraham Bwachi, popularly known as One Man Supporter, had fled back to Russia after the first part of the story broke. Gideon Safo, the nephew of one of the trapped men, expressed deep anger. Unfortunately, we were present that we wanted to go and meet One Man Supporter and the leaders so that we would know uh, the truth. But unfortunately, our brother was just uh, trying not to allow us to go and see One Man Supporter. He wanted to do it himself. In fact, we don't know what to do and just we need we need help we need the government of ghana their help ghana government ghana help uh, ministry of foreign affairs uh, the military the police headquarters we need their help if even if we don't arrest one man supporter they should talk to the embassy so that at least they will bring people back once the people are back then we can deal with one man supporter for now the cid is saying that we have to wait for one man supporter to come we can't wait while they are there they should just talk to the embassy russian embassy in ghana they will come when they come, then we deal with one man supporter. But the police is saying that we should wait for one man supporter to come because he said that he will come today. As to the time that he will come, we don't know. But we have also heard that one man supporter, then the police also said that one man supporter is in Togo and that he said he wants to go to Russia uh, to bring them back. At the moment, they are full of fear, saying that they want their family members to return back home as soon as possible. I am making a man Russian version as what I No, Oma, I force a man Kalani and Saka or Moganahano because as at now, no one man support an idea or then Kalani Koyano, Yehuno. This is the office of the accused Abraham Bwachi, also known as one man supporter. This is my second time coming here hoping to get a side of the story, but unfortunately, just as you can see, his office has been locked up. Security analyst Adib Sani warns of the growing danger this situation poses, not just for the men, but for Ghana as a whole. The possibility that these individuals uh, can come back home as Wagner but operate covertly is very high. So this is a grave national issue. In fact, first time I saw a picture or in a video, as a matter of fact, of some Ghanaians who were fighting there, I, I presented it to the national security. They said they were looking into it, but to what extent um, have they looked into it is what I'm unable to tell at this point in time. But surely it is a grave matter that should be seriously looked into. So I would expect the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to quickly 
um, activate its mechanisms and find ways to bring in them home. Secondly, like I indicated, public education is extremely important. A lot of Ghanaians are oblivious of what is going on beyond our borders. I mean, what they are bothered about is uh, they are bread and butter issues. A Ghanaian community leader in Russia speaking on condition of anonymity revealed that many Ghanaians who were sent to the front lines have never returned. They died in combat. Others have come back with amputated limbs, while a few have been safely repatriated to Ghana. According to a BBC report, more than 70,000 people fighting in Russia's military have died in Ukraine, with the highest number of casualties now being volunteers. Many of them were civilians. Just like these Ghanaian men forced to join the war after Russia's full-scale invasion in 2022. BBC Russian and the independent website MediaZona, using data from open sources and official reports, have identified the names of 70,112 Russian soldiers killed, but the true death toll is believed to be even higher. The Ghanaians trapped on the front lines of Ukraine fear they may soon become part of these alarming statistics if they are not rescued from this nightmarish ordeal and return home immediately. Godwin Asilewa, TV3 News.